please. Okay, thank you. Um, so this this is a little a, a little survey, a poll, which was uh, which I led in uh, mid August and September, a very short uh, poll, giving just an, an, an overview of the guidelines uh, um, used by uh, several of the main organisations in France who deal with uh, alcohol in their relationship with their audience. So it's, it doesn't claim to be exhaustive, of course, and I cannot go into details, really. Uh, the idea is rather to illustrate the work done in, uh, in the frame of RARA on guidelines. Um, what was the target? The target, 37 uh, organizations, head of networks, NGOs and GO, two GO organizations, globally the health work uh, in France, and some two institutes, and 10 organizations responded. So for the, que the first question was, when working with your audience, what do you use as a standard measure or uh, standard measure or guidelines for 70% of, of the respondents they use uh, a standard uh, measure, a standard drink. Uh, and for less than 70, about 66% of the respondent uh, use guidelines. But what they mean by which, which standard content they use is um, for about 74, I think 74 percent of the respondents use the glass. Um, 38 percent, less than 30 percent, uh, the units, and um, 55 or 56, I don't remember exactly, 55 uh, percent of respondents use a gram of pure alcohol. But knowing that uh, those who use the glass use also mostly the poor uh, the gram of pure alcohol. Um, when they use um, when they speak about low risk guidelines with the audience, uh, which threshold they they mention per day, less than two units, or a one glass, or half a glass, or three glasses for men and two for women. Uh, or two glasses and or 20 grams of pure alcohol. And per week, 21 glasses for men and 40 glasses, 14 glasses for women and less than 14 units. And per occasion, in one occasion, um, they recommend, they say, they speak about less than four units or two glasses or four glasses in, in one occasion or two glasses and or 20 grams of pure alcohol. Um, at which occasion they recommend the low risk guidelines, uh, mainly during meals and or in parties. Uh, and other other res, uh, respondents say uh, whatever the occasion. Uh, in which context is it used in risk situation, driving, at workplace, uh, but some organizations say no, no alcohol at workplace, no on roads. So they're two different position, opposite position. <coughs> and for which public do they use it? They recommend it to adults, no alcohol for pregnant women, for use, but it depends on the definition. Usually the same for adults, except for children and teenagers for whom no level is defined. In this case, the notion of risk is privileged. And no alcohol before uh, 16, nor for pregnant women, uh, this is another respond of, uh, uh, for this question. Um, yeah, uh, recommendation information of studies, they answered, uh, refers to, sorry, I, am disappear I disappear for some seconds. Um, uh, I'm back. Um, yes, they refer to mainly to WHO recommendations, um, to science, globally, the science, to the French Conference of Consensus, 
to the, um, the High Committee of Public Health, uh, DG uh, Health, uh, Melanie Coles, I don't know her. She wrote probably in the British Medical Journal and uh, made a study about alcohol rules and, uh, and driving recommendation in France. Uh, and the recommendation of, from the SFI is the French Society uh, of Alcoholology. So these are, are the sources. And there was a, a question subsidiaire. Um, do you have a consumption estimate raising hope of a protective effect on certain diseases? Please specify them with corresponding doses. So the answers were no dose, there is no dose, no precise thresholds. The cardiovascular protective effect studies are still insufficient. The protective effect of alcohol on coronary heart disease is highly variable depending on the study. It can vary from one glass to five or six or more. The message is one to two drinks per day. Another respondent said there is no consensus on the protective effect vis a vis dementia. And uh, finally, one to two drinks per day reducing cardiovascular diseases. Um, the conclusion is that concerning uh, standard drinks, the unit is not often used uh, versus a glass and or the gram of pure alcohol. Uh, when it comes to guidelines, they differ depending on the organization. Two drinks per day or per, in one occasion, are mentioned several times. Uh, the concept of abstinence is marked by respondents when it comes to young people and pregnant women. This is clear. The risk is also well marked uh, when driving and at work, except for one organization. And the French paradox finally remains controversial. Um, what I would like to add is, um, oh, I just probably I forgot one. There was another question I, I haven't shown here is uh, a question about the high risk guidelines. Um, generally, they, the answers uh, were um, above the low risk guidelines, just above the low risk, of course. Um, and some organizations uh, uh, mentioned two glasses or more than 14 uh, per week or four glasses in one occasion. So that's very different uh, depending on the answer. And, and there was a, a question of about what uh, is a no-risk guideline, what could be a no-risk guideline. There's all the respondents skipped the question, so I have no answer about this. Um, so coming to the to these two events in France, uh, we'd like to add it uh, in the context of our work here um, that this question of consumer guidelines become crucial as a proof. I wish mentioned these two uh, recent uh, events in France. One is the adoption uh, by the national parliament, and contrary to the advice of the Ministry of Health, clear. Who, who was clearly against, of an amendment weakening the so-called loi Evin for the authors, I mean the members of the parliament. The aim is to ensure a clear framework for the survival of the wine production and the development of local, what we call local oenological tourism or local, local oenologic tourism projects. Um, the change which happened in, with this amendment in France is in particular the distinction between, uh, made between advertising and information. In, uh, no information, of course, which will increase, without any doubt, opportunities for alcohol producers, for wine producers and also spirits, to generate indirect uh, advertising through promoting gastronomy programs, through presenting wine production methods, calling for visits of wine areas with wine tasting, uh, on so, and so on, uh, on radio and TV programs, and newspapers, etc., etc. Uh, the second event um, is the first 
pub public campaign on wine launched last year in December by Va et Société, a producer organization which promotes consumer guidelines. The campaign was called uh, Loving the Wine Means Knowing the Consumer Guidelines. And the slogan, the slogan was, Aimer le vin, je sais pas si on peut, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, Aimer le vin, c'est aussi avoir un grain de raison. Um, translated, loving wine is also having a grape of reason. Um, and the benchmark uh, proposed by, in this campaign uh, were the numbers two, three, four, zero. Two for maximum two drinks per day for women. Three for maximum three drinks per day for men. Four for maximum four drinks on one occasion. And zero glass one day a week. Abstainer during one day in a week. The idea, according to the industry, is, I quote, um, to make known to the public consumption benchmarks set by public authorities and that nine out of ten French are unaware. They are supposed uh, to give a very clear framework for the concept of moderation and the definition of excessive co consumption. But this campaign doesn't mention that there is no threshold without risk, no mention zero alcohol for pregnant women or young people or vulnerable people. The problem here is in this, with this campaign is that they have taken benchmarks that uh, what we call the high authority of uh, health had promoted earlier many years ago. Uh, and the industry asks that these guidelines are mentioned in the National Health and Nutrition Plan 2011-2015. What is correct? And really, mentioned in this national plan is three glasses for men and two for women, that's, that's right. But there is no mention of four glasses per, in one occasion or zero glasses one day, etc., etc., per week. For the high authority of health, they must be considered as alert thresholds and not as benchmarks for acceptable consumption. Obviously, association and doctors reacted, responded by stressing the encouragement of the consumption in relation to the allocated advertising budget. The amount was around 60,000 euros. Knowing that more advertising more adver advertising, sorry, uh, means more alcohol consumed. Various studies um, have already shown that a mere 1% increase in advertising spending boosts the amount of alcohol consumed by 0.25%. Unfortunately, I haven't checked this, so, um, but what I can suggest and can I ask for help uh, is I, I see that there is a representative of the industry here. Uh, if the industry or if you could uh, confirm this, this, this data, that's my question. So anyway, uh, that's why, I mean, uh, I consider that for these, these reasons that the work on guidelines really is um, timely. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Claude. That was uh, an, 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 an important contribution. And you know, France, certainly within the UK, France is, is, is often looked to as a, as a country where uh, of, of a, a good example of, of an alcohol culture. And it's, uh, it's important for us to remind ourselves that that's uh, not always such a positive story. Um, part of the consideration in the UK on the understanding of units found that wine seemed to be the most difficult drink for people to keep track of, really for two reasons. Firstly, the variation in the strength of wine, and I think it was Mark's work that showed that uh, Australia is the biggest wine producing country for the United Kingdom. It's Australian wines that tend to be stronger at 13, 14%. 
Um, so our wines vary quite a lot in strength, and, and that's one reason. The second reason is, is the size of the glasses. Of the glasses. Mm -hmm. Not unusual uh, for glasses to be 250 mLs, so a third of a bottle in a, in a, in a single glass uh, in, in the UK. So these were the reasons why wine was particular, was more difficult for people to keep track of their units. And I was just interested that that didn't seem to be seen as a problem in France. Is that, is that because your wine glass sizes have stayed the same? Uh, has there been any change in glasses becoming bigger? Or is there a, a French standard that's somehow been, been, been kept to both for home drinking and for uh, drinking in cafes and bars? Uh, what what is the reality is of course you don't need uh, you don't use the same uh, standard drink at home and in in the bars right. yeah. and classically uh, uh, what is a, a standard drink in France is a the, the small glass yeah. a small glass uh, we, we call it the ballon yeah. and this this is really very known uh, I mean people it's a good benchmark I mean so that that, that would be about one one two five. MLs is that is that right? Twelve and a half CLs, twelve point five CL by volume. The ballon. One Sorry. One deciliter. No. Uh, oh, the ballon. No, it's ten. Yeah, it's ten. Uh, ten grams. Right. Of pure alcohol. Yeah. So that that obviously make, makes it has, has made it easier to to compare strengths and for French people mm. to understand strengths, whereas. It's, it's been a difficulty, I think, in other countries, the, the, just the change in the, the size of glasses. Okay. Next one. We have time because you respect the time. Yes. Yes, Marianne. Yeah, it's Marianne Scott from the European Alcohol Policy Alliance. It's not really a question to Claude. It's more just a comment when we're discussing wine. I thought I should, if you're not aware of it, there's a reason why wine is also is particularly problematic. Wine today in the European Commission, while we are struggling to get funding for this and that and whatever, the, uh, the DG Agri gives, uh, the Agricultural Ministry gives 200 million euros per year uh, to promote wine. wine in Europe and abroad. And this is even though uh, the Commission, the Court of Auditors, did an audit uh, a couple of years ago, and it was said that at that time it was 100 million euros per year. And then the Court of Auditors said that they couldn't really see there was any added value for this use of this money. Mm. But even though with that report, they increased it to 200 million a year. Other question? Yes. So, Claude, did I understand right that there are no um, official guidelines set in France, and is there any process? Oh, sorry, I, I am. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, did I understand right that there there are no official guidelines in France, and, is, and do you foresee uh, any I process don't, whereby I don't such remember what guidelines would be developed? Was the DG answer uh, at the beginning of the Rara project if they say that there? Are the, the, the benchmarks are two and three glasses. I don't remember exactly, but it is maybe probably in the papers. <laughs> I haven't checked this um, officially, I mean. But at least they would not be so widely um, uh, publicized that that uh, yeah, people would know would them, know the doctors would know, would yeah. know them there and refer to these same sets of guidelines. There is a problem of communication. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. As far as oh, I know, are just a recommendation, not official, but uh, yes. Yeah, 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 probably, yeah. Yeah. you are right, yeah. yeah. You have, you have, you have we checked. Have similar you have problem. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, I'm Mathieu Capoue from the Belgian Ministry of Health. I had just a comment also on, on, the, on the fact that it seems in France that wine producers are promoting some guidelines. Um, it's a bit the same in Belgium, so we do not have official guidelines at all, so uh, um, official authorities are not, communicate, are not communicating at all on guidelines, except for the fact that pregnant women should not drink at all. That is kind of the only 
official guideline we have. Uh, but the only people communicating on guidelines in Belgium are industry. So from time to time, they are uh, organizing campaigns. Uh, there was recently one in one of the biggest train stations in Brussels. So they were uh, it was Bacardi who was doing that, communicating on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 for pregnant women, 1 for the day you should not drink during the week, and then 2, 3, 4, the same that in France. And so, well, for me, that clearly also pose a question. Um, why do they, why do the industries communicating on these guidelines? And it's for me also, um, well, we should also reflect on that link to how we want to communicate. And well, it's just a global reflection on that. I'm sorry, but I want to correct on that. Take, take mic. Yeah, I will take the mic. I feel obliged to correct this because I'm in Belgium and we are communicating as the partner of the Flemish government uh, straight and correct guidelines. Huh? So uh, we are giving a lot of messages in the Flemish part of Belgium and with Flemish GPs. And I was sorry to see also in the Delphi study that we were a blank part in the map, although uh, even my Brussels colleagues are giving the same messages and the alcohol and drug prevention and treatment centers are, have a consensus on uh, guidelines uh, how to drink. So I should correct this. We, we, we are doing campaigns. We have uh, leaflets. We have all that kind of stuff. More question? Oh, do, you, do you mean that this is an official position? Well, this oh. is the position of the alcohol and treatment Sector. sector. It's a prevention, sector. Treatment, yeah. Mm. A yeah. Consensus. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. Nothing more. Okay. Okay. Yes. Then let's move forward in the program.